to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Welcome, everybody, to the work session, April 17th, 9.30 a.m. Beautiful Town Hall. I'll have to start with the uh, roll call. President Scott Howard. I am here. William R. Pell, Treasury Secretary, here. Edward J. Warner. Yep. Ann Walker. Here. William Parrish. Present. You got a full mm -hmm. board. All right. We have a full board here. Okay. We have some discussions on the agenda. Um, Let's start with that. I got Special Counsel Lombardo here for a two tree farm. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Uh, the reason I asked this was to be placed on the agenda this morning is there was a, an inquiry made by uh, Kieran Pape Murphy, who is an attorney representing a property owner in, uh, I guess, the Watermill Bridge Hampton area. Uh, wanting to know about a temporary bridge during the Hampton Classic, and I suggested she come and speak to you people. Hello, I'm Karen Pate Murphy. I'm an attorney, and my clients are uh, Hay Ground Road Development LLC. Uh, they bought uh, Two Trees Farm last year. Um, you have to step them in. Stamp that in. Okay, sorry. Yeah, we'll just, we'll there and um, they uh, are talking about, they talked to me about having a horse show on the Two Trees property. But they wanted, um, now the Two Trees property is 63 acres. And then they have an adjacent 9.9 .9 acres that they don't own. But um, they were talking about having a, a two week horse show uh, <coughs> prior to the Hampton Classic and that they wanted to use um, the Hampton Classic property, uh, I guess, for uh, parking and uh, uh, horses, because, I mean, their tents will be up. And, um, you know, they, they were talking about access. And I understand, I said I would come to you first. And just this idea of um, maybe a temporary bridge I would think, um, I'm not sure where they own the property. Um, uh, it's one of the board of directors, uh, Tarna Paul, I, I, I don't have her married name. She's a big Grand Prix jumper and uh, they would want, want to be able to just transport, store stuff on the Hampton Classic property, but the show would be at Two Trees because the Hampton Classic has a special zoning and which allows for eight days of showing. So that's a separate show. But to have a, a, a similar um, show on the Two Trees property. And the question is, how would they get access? And you know, that's something that would have to be look, looked into with the, with the town attorney. I looked at the law briefly. Um, and it is, you know, they do put the tents up earlier. But the first question was, how, how would you get access over? So um, they own, uh, not my clients, but uh, Tarnapole. I'm sorry, I forgot her married name. She's a big Grand Prix jumper. Um, she owns the, uh, that lot. It doesn't have a house on it. And she owns the house north of it. And she owns that farmland uh, and that she could cut over to. Uh, you could cut over to two trees. So anyhow, um, I know that this would be, um, you know, that there's, there's uh, probably some wetlands. And uh, I mean, I just wanted to throw out the idea of this. I mean, obviously, they'd have to hire an environmental consultant, uh, you know, to, to really look into this. But, um, you know, it would be a way of, uh, uh, reducing traffic um, because then two trees uh, you know it's it's on the corner of hay ground it's got a whole road so I just wanted to um, maybe get some initial feedback I don't I'm, I'm an attorney I don't have the environmental background but I know that this is part of the long pond green belt system and um, uh, anyhow so 
could think of it maybe as a temporary dock. Um, Thank you so much for coming before the board, for agreeing yeah. to be here today. We yes. appreciate your request on your client's behalf. Um, however, um, let me just make sure I'm clear on this. Yes. What you're asking for is the permission to construct a temporary bridge from a parcel owned by your client across a freshwater pond within the Long Pond Greenbelt to the Hampton Classic property. Yes. Right. So, and this would be for purposes of convenience. Um, yes, instead of having to, I guess, drive around and also, yes. Right. So there are multiple horse shows that are conducted on the East End each summer. Yes. And my understanding is that I believe all of those horse shows are able to use the the parcels with within which they own for the setup and the show itself and the breakdown. So um, as far as I'm concerned, and I'm just one voice, um, this um, this proposal is goes against everything that this board stands for um, in terms of protection of the environment and access for the freeholders. So I don't know what others would say if you cared to weigh in. Well, I mean, well would you just? Yeah, I mean, uh, I first off the permitting process that you get involved in. I can say just on a simple doc, you're looking at a year to two years. Uh, you would need to do a whole entire environmental study on this project. Would you say you, EIS? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this is this is a this is a serious project that you and something like this nature only for a temporary bridge, for the convenience of a few people. I don't think that the, the public benefit is uh, is there, and I, I think the environment, uh, the degradation to the environment, is going to be far outweigh any public benefit that you could possibly achieve from this. Do you like to say anything else, or I think I've gotten the picture. I mean, this is like <coughs> we've looked at this for about what two minutes. <laughs> you know, you've got a lot of negativity surrounding it already. Yes. When were you? When were you even wanting to do this? It would be next year. Right. So that that is problematic to begin with, just on the permitting side. Right. Do you yes. think it would be? Uh, you got an option. It B? would be. We'd have to get permits from you. The probably from Marty. Yeah, I would. I would. I would have a conversation. Uh, the bigger conversation would probably be with Marty to see uh, what his parameters, and then right. uh, we would, you know, being that we sister up the property, sisters up to his jurisdiction. Um, but I, I don't see, you know, personally, you know, the, you know, the, the negative impacts on the environment, any positive thing for the, uh, you know, for the environment. I really don't. A temporary bridge, you have to disturb the property. And then you have to disturb it again, taking it out. And if you're going to put it back in, it's it's going to be a constant, uh, you know, flux of uh, in the environment of change there. I, I was just thinking that because a permanent bridge, you know, you have to deal with. Um, you'd have to go through the same process, process. as a as a temporary bridge. Oh, so I mean, you, you'd one, have yeah. to go through, uh, you know, engineering and uh, you know, uh, probably getting the highway involved. And uh, th there's a lot of people in the town that would have to weigh in on this. And um, I personally think that we would be setting a bad precedent moving forward. Yeah, I mean, this is, yeah. It is. I mean, we, we, we had this uh, project of, pro I don't, Billy, were you on there when they wanted to do the walkway across yeah. by, by uh, Fred's property? And we yeah. basically said no to that. Martyrs. That was 2014. Yeah, yeah that was that Martyrs. Was me. Yeah, and we. That was me. That was in 2014, I think, yes. right? Yeah. And yeah. We, so, we, but, you know, I, I need, you know, my clients, whatever, they wanted to. I yeah, have to so at least come to you to, to, yeah, it, to it, tell them that things have not changed. This is problematic. Changed. It, it's problematic yes. to say the least. Yeah. So that's why I figured yeah. maybe a temporary would be Is this supposed to be a better. walking bridge or would it drive vehicles over? No, it's got to be walking. It would yeah. be walking, maybe walking. a golf cart, but um, I think the idea of maybe, maybe, maybe rowboats. You know, maybe <laughs> rowboats. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I was wondering. I don't see. Um, a floating bridge. 
A floating, yeah, floating bridge. Um, yeah, but yeah, that would the not wetlands be. are going to get destroyed. This is the problem. And once you destroy the wetlands, you're not going to reconstruct them and then come back next year and do it all over again. So it would be, you know, okay. a real, I don't so see So you would think the wetlands would be, like yes. there wouldn't be a, a, like an idea of restoration I, I, that would that would get damaged, I guess, right? It, it, well, you, you're looking to do a temporary bridge, but when temporary bridges are installed, they usually have... A longevity of just one year and so that would be you know you'd be taking those wetlands out of the mix even if you were to do plantings and replace it I don't so if I did a permanent bridge then yeah but still the, no, I, I know you wouldn't I, you, you wouldn't agree to I this. wouldn't be I'm not I, I'm not voting on anything but just I know from just, my well, that's the perspective idea. I mean you're trying to resolve okay. like you're trying to save on traffic and logistics and right what you're trying to do. yeah it's around the block well, it's less than a mile probably to go down. If you come out of Snake Hollow Road, go down Mitchell Lane to Scuttle Hole, and then back down. Um, back well, easier down. to run a shuttle or something. Yeah, maybe. You know? it, well, it's for the horses as well. So yeah. it yes. is loading and unloading them. Yes, I understand I, that. I know some horses won't go over bridges. I'm sure. Yeah, the, some of the horses they have at the. And the classic are very And you uh, can't swim them across either. That's not, please no, don't even no, ask. No, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Did you look at the railroad tracks? you got pollution on top of it, too. You know, that's another thing. I mean, there is the railroad tracks. Um, uh, not to go on them, but I know there's a 50-foot buffer. Um, so there is land there. Um, but that would be, would that be in your jurisdiction, then? No. When you, when you, when you get near railroad, you're, you're talking about a whole new... Uh, no, oh, that's the MTA. Yeah, MTA. you're, you're, you're talking a, a whole new MTA easement. Yeah, and that's also you would have to go through because Sayer Park yeah. is uh, Southampton Marty. Town. Oh, that's right. Parks yes. and Rec. And yeah. then you would have to get access through multiple homeowners to get to. Yes, and now I saw that. Property. I think it's. And it's not owned by one of my clients. I checked on that. You got so. a plan B or C? Maybe D? Yes, Local. but you know what? I have. Um, they just bought the horse farm. They're I from Florida. You. They, they show in Europe. I mean, you know, we're trying to explain. We're, we're chugging down the alphabet one letter at a time here. <laughs> yes. So I said I would go to the source, and right. uh, yeah. I kind of, you know, wanted to get your feedback right. it, it, because you're the experts, and uh, right. and I would articulate the issues. It, it's problematic. All to the say, issues. Right. Better it, than I, I would. Pr so problematic to say the least, especially. But I had to. I had to give. No, I, I get no, that, yeah. but you yes. know. Yeah. Problematic to say the least, and especially if it's on a temporary basis, I don't think the ends are going to justify the means. It's just right. I was thought maybe that was better since I was here for a permanent. Bridge. Right, but I guess you still have the disturbance going on, you right? Know, and then you got the in and the out. You still have that disturbance, so I think that's still going to be a big consideration. Yes. And when you factor in the engineering and the process to go in, it's it, it's just not going to be feasible. Yes. It seems so. Maybe you got to move further down the alphabet here and. Well, there's Probably. also farmland across Scuttle Hole. Um, I think, um, but anyhow, I, there are some other options I can explore. But you know, this right. one was was uh, brought up. And, not uh, not the first time there's been something that's looked decent on paper, but yes. yet in practicality doesn't you know and really fly. In, you know, so I thank you for letting me yep. have your time, yeah. and because you know people like why not you know and I and I. And I Wanted to go to the experts, and so, so thank you nice for to taking see you. my if, time. If your clients need additional explanation, one of us. Are, I appreciate that to. because yeah. yeah, I'm dealing with uh, sure. you know some language issues sure. too. So yep. we, all right, we, well yeah. thank we're, we're you. Have, you. Have a thank great you. day. Yep. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, so one more copy. Trustee Welker, you have a, a Peters yes, Pond porta potty. I I do. Um, Mayor Tillotson from Saginaw. Thank, okay. so, thank you so much for coming today. Oh, we really appreciate it. It's interesting. It. It's nice to see how somebody else operates. <laughs> um, there are no uh, public restrooms in Sagaponic, and so one of the things I wanted to do when I became mayor was to get uh, at least Porta Johns in a few places. So we have a tremendous traffic of guys servicing our community and East Hampton who come out of Hampton Bays and West Hampton and Riverhead. And uh, I know, well, I, I supplied these. I have a nursery business, used to. Uh, and you know that they have a real problem, you know, when you got to drive an hour and 15 minutes to get home at night, where do you go to the John? 
during COVID, standing in line at the post office, they had a sign that said, "Go to, if no public restroom, go to Starbucks or Speedway gas station. And it just burned me. Anyway, uh, my trustees are very resistant to what I want. Um, I wanted to put one where the trail, there's a walking trail that meets Daniels Lane, but it's a very visible location. There's nothing there. And so they say, you go down the road and you see a port john I offered to build a structure around it. They didn't want to see anything. And finally, they said, well, maybe we can put it on uh, Peter's Pond Lane, um, but that's yours. And uh, so I'm here to see if you <coughs> would let us put a portage on uh, on Peter's Pond. Could you describe it? Because you had a vision for where and how it would be constructed. Uh, well, my vision is it should be right on our right of way, the village's right of way. But they don't like that because when you drive down the road, you will see it. Uh, the alternate is to put it down uh, your property on the uh, east side. Uh, one of the trustees went down and put a stake in. I measured 175 feet down the road. Guys pulling a landscape trailer are not going to drive down there. Uh, it's a no parking zone at the end of the road. Uh, so some guy's going to have to park and walk, you know, a football field length once he gets his trailer off the road. And to me, it's not, it's not workable. It's not convenient. I mean, I've, I've done that kind of work, and I'm very conscious. Everybody has cameras. You can't go and pee in somebody's backyard. There are a lot of women gardening crews. Uh, I know a lot of the people I supplied used to come into my business and use the bathroom, which is great, but uh, it's not convenient for them all the time. Anyway, uh, basically a port john I would say 50 feet uh, in from uh, uh, Daniel's Lane on the east side up against the hedge. Right. But you said that you would um, fence around it. And I, then I could do that. I volunteered to build it. Right. Right. And but, but that's a structure, and it would be on your road. And but Or you would do some sort of temporary fencing. And did Absolutely. you also mention, like, landscaping or something that was around it? Or I, I'm not recalling uh, well, I, the discussion this right whole, now. A uh, bunch of these proposals. I oh, wanted to okay. have one by Sag Bridge, and they adamantly refu refused to do that. I mean, people kayak there, they paddleboard there, they fish from the bridge, they crab from the bridge, and there are a lot of people who jog and bike through there. Uh, it's really a necessary thing. A friend of mine used to farm the field right near the bridge and said uh, what people did in the edge of the pond and the bulrushes was disgusting, and it also goes in the water. Uh, my trustees did not want to hear that. Uh, I offered to build something, uh, plant shrubbery around it, and uh, I got, you know, stonewalled. Well, but you will mix you you the Peconic Land Trust. I think they own the land right next to that. Oh, well, uh, yeah, I, I was just looking to use our right of way because, yeah. you know, it's our right of way, mm -hmm. so we yeah. could do what we want. I have no problem. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Well, um, so, so, but I just want, you know, Whatever way you design it, that the wind can't knock it over, or a car can't knock it over. Exactly. Um, yeah. And plant some bushes or a fence around it or something. Right. I'm fine with well, it. Well, in any any area. <laughs> well, I, I know what you're talking because I see it. I drive yeah. down here all the time. Right. Well, if you need it, it's good to be able to see it. You know? Well, but people. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right. <laughs> people learn it's there. You, bet, well, mouth. you hope yeah. you learn real fast if you need it. <laughs> you have another one on Narrow There's Lane? There's one near my house. They gave it, me one near my house on Narrow Lane East. Right. And so there's no the screening side. on that. Right. That one's, one's just, that one's just, I'm it's on the south the side. Yeah. It's on the but, south side of Narrow Lane down towards the intersection right. yep. of, it, that's not Town Line. What, what is that uh, road? Narrow Lane and, East. Yes, but what's the road that's just to the east of that? The east runs of north it is uh, north Wayne Scott South. Harbor Road. Yes, yeah, so yes, it's between down Sag there. Road and Wayne yeah. Scott Harbor Road. Right. I mean, Mr. Mayor. I mean, if you if you if you uh, you, know, you travel around the interstates or whatever, and you go to different places, the other areas seem to be more user friendly for this natural activity versus here, where you have a tremendous amount of people and traffic. And where do you go? Like you said, to your right. point, going to the post office, pushing you to other places. So I mean, we'll. We'll work with you, figure something out that makes sense. You know, it's... I, I mean, um, it, is, uh, you, you'd be amenable to making a you know, rough board fence around it, kind of rustic looking thing? I don't have a problem. Um, Councilman Julie Lofsted asked to install one over at Road H, which is a trustee road uh, just west of the canal. 
The issue that came upon that was that people could see it from Oakland's deck when they were dining. So they had to logistically move it in a way that the, it was not visual when people, that was the, that was the biggest problem. Oh. And um, I, mean, I know with the porta party open like that, winds and storms, that the, it needs to be very uh, much secured, otherwise it'll blow over exactly. and, and cause a problem. Yep. But uh, I, I talked to Ann about this and, and it makes sense down there because we have a beach that everybody in the public uses. It's, it's a very large uh, area where there's a lot of people. And, right. uh, you know, uh, it is a pollutant once you, you know, do your business in, in the woods. And it would make total practical sense to accommodate w with one of these porta potties, but it needs to be done in a way that it's secure. And we could there there are multiple screening things that applications that we could use to hide this so it's not that visible and still let people know that it's there. And, and I would assume you're going to get a handle on you know proper maintenance so that there's a schedule yeah. and not doesn't create you know. Well, we, the one that near my house uh, we use Call Ahead, which I guess has a municipal. Uh, contract and they provide a weekly service which uh, at the moment is just fine right yeah. so you'll you'll yeah. monitor that just to yeah. not just monitor you would take the responsibility right. for the payment right. as right. well oh right. yeah yeah did you sorry Ed, did you discuss with your board the possibility of the location being at Gibson Beach rather than Peter's Pond um, I was going to let some other trustee bring that up. Some somebody's mentioned that, and I thought that doesn't service the workers. And I really, you know, knowing that my business had over 400 wholesale customers. That's the level of landscape service that happens out in this area. I mean, you see the trucks. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there are tons of different people, and there are huge work crews. Uh, you know, if you go to a construction site, they have their own porta potties, but the uh, the landscape crews who go, you know, pool services, gardening, people who weed and weed whack and all that stuff, and all the properties, high end properties, have cameras now. You can't just go in the bushes, and it becomes very difficult. Uh, my son uh, has the business that I built, and uh, talking with his workers, they were aware of this. Um, that they have friends who would uh, say stop at a construction site and try to use their porta johns, and we're told they needed to pay, <laughs> which is uh, I don't know. I find that all objectionable. Um, any, anyway, yeah, Peter's Pond. Uh, I think it's a natural place, but I wasn't going to bring it up because that's Amy more Gibson. of a beachgoer right, thing, right. and. Uh, I, was, I just I just wanted to inquire just yeah, to right. see what no, other. No, it's it's definitely there. Yeah, we, we asked uh, the town to uh, keep a Porta John at Sag Main Beach, and uh, they take it away. They wouldn't leave it for us. Mm -hmm. yeah, there is one at the uh, Punk Walk, the Ed Warner uh, Memorial Park over there that oh. the Parks Department has had there for years. Right, and it's well maintained, and they've had very little issues with storms and tilting over and, and washing away and stuff like that. So right. you might want to co contact Kristen Dulos and maybe get a little bit of information. It, it's very highly used. Yeah. So I Well, you can peg them. They, the Porta Johns uh, have uh, holes on the corners and you can peg them down so they won't blow over. They do float, though, in hurricanes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, those are, you know, listen, in extreme events, all bets are off for anything. Obviously. Right. I mean, what are you going to do? I don't remember the last time Peter's Pond was flooded in a hurricane. No. Right. Sandy, maybe? <laughs> maybe. We'll yeah. work, listen, we'll, we'll work with you. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. I, I think yeah. the general yeah. consensus is not to <clears throat> not to be legal. Yeah. We'll, we'll work with you. Figure out, you know, you have to deal with your board, obviously, right. and your, your trustees. And But look, I don't think there's any major. It'll change. be easy on our side. No, I think <clears throat> as long as you propose a, a screening. Yeah. What? Well, I, I can tell you, I mean, I, I made up a materials list and so on and so on. Uh, Porta John is uh, three and a half feet wide and four feet deep. It's, you know, basically a pallet. That's how they make them. And so the, the uh, outside dimension of a fence would be uh, basically five by five by five, you know, a five foot. So it's going to be this wide and five feet deep. And you need uh, seven foot two, I think, to get over the, the top of the Porta John. And uh, it would be made out of rough, rough sawn either, depending on what material is available, rough sawn pine or rough sawn cedar, 
four four by four uh, CCA posts, some lateral uh, two by six uh, framing to hold the planks, and then it would be planked around it on three sides. Um, that's it. I mean, I'm not a guy who draws a lot of stuff, but if you want a crude <laughs> crayon drawing of it, I could do that. That was going to be my next step, is, or my next question is kind of what's the next step? Do we need a sketch? Do we need, because we'll have to draw up some sort I, I of I think we need an official right? request to draw a resolution up off of, so ah, put yeah, something okay. together for us yeah. to actually yeah. Resolve to, you okay. know. In the location. I'll, I'll, I'll have my attorney talk to your attorney. You could do that. That's fine. We got a whole bank of attorneys <laughs> that can deal with porta potty issues. I'm sure. Um, you know, <clears throat> you wouldn't be wasting your time. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank so, you very much. Right, we'll and I'll be in touch. Get something over to you guys. Okay, Mayor. <laughs> could you just sign in on that sheet? Oh, right sure. There? Thank you. I Thank you for it. coming today. Yeah. No, it's. I, it's I just uh, when I brought it up last meeting I guess there were some questions and not really concerns but just questions and just queries so it was very helpful to have you here today because sure. we do understand that it's a concern so. I, I know what you mean thank you folks okay, okay have thank, you, you, mayor. thank yeah. you mayor thank you mayor all right Let's jump into the general permit applications for determination. Uh, I've got N consultants. Nine Duckwood Lane. Let's see Susanna here. Hi. Hello. So this is a modification. You approved it originally for the previous owner. Um, and the only change that we're making is to convert the posts that are holding the float from four by fours to six inch piles because according to the contractor, we're proposing or we're required to chalk the float because on the landward side, the water is not as deep as it is just a few feet farther out. So if you're going to chalk the float, we need to have thicker piles. More, more st sturdy poles. Right, right. I have no problem with this. I mean, I think it's okay. I'm good with it. Oh, you, oh, no do you say you don't yeah. have a problem? I, oh, I, I have a problem. I, have no I thought problem. he did too. I have no problem with it at all. <laughs> yeah. No, none of us heard no, no, no problem. problem. And we just we got done with the porta potty thing. That would be okay. a problem. So. I'm, I'm also <laughs> very much in favor of porta potties. Of course. As a runner, a lot of times you run by the beach and you need a porta potty, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's very important. No, no, so we agree. You can do in that regard. Yeah, thank right. you. And the workers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll be out flagging wetlands for half a day, and there's nowhere to go. Right. Kmart, Starbucks. Yeah, yeah. you have to be strategic yeah. about your day. You, you do. And you your do. and your coffee. And the cameras are everywhere now. <laughs> it's it's an issue. Anyway. True, true. But this is fine. Okay. It's fine. It should advance, in my opinion. There's no nothing egregious. It makes total sense to be okay, good. better engineering. Well, Thanks. Thank you. Now I know. I didn't do the original design. That was it's all right. Minutes, so. It's okay. And, and thanks for weighing in on the port of potty. <laughs> it's good. We just need the stand plan. Thank you, Susanna. The next one is Ernest H. Spellman, Ten Hyler Drive, Hampton Bays. So I don't see anybody representing Mr. Spellman here, but we can go through this. Refacing 150 existing wood bulkhead recycled plastic sheathing using replast. Um, stole a two by eight green heart drop well. Tie rods exist into the existing dead man system, non-treated wood top cap, through bolted. Um, existing wall structurally sound has developed holes and gaps, so he wants to reface it in order to fix that. Um, he will replace uh, the planting schedule, which was created by the Southampton Town Environment Department, as described in the covenants and restrictions, which are included. So I, he's just doing maintenance on his property. He's come for a permit refacing. I don't have a problem with it. It should advance. I'm good with it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And the next one that I have is Shinbone Bay, which is 48 Shinnecock Village of Quag, which is an interscience project. <coughs> we just 
for that last one. We just need the stand plan, so I'll reach out to them. Yeah, you could do that. Just tell them what we need. Obviously, because then it's going to go back on for a work session agenda for approval of the stand plan. Correct. All right. You want me up here, Scott? Yeah, wherever you feel comfortable to discuss Good. this project, because I'm looking at my file here. I just. Let's see, what do we have? Uh, this is maintenance stretching of a boat slip. Not yeah, very yeah well, that's all right. It's important. Um, we're trying to do this uh, with the other permit that the Board of Trustees has already issued for the bulkhead renewal and do it all at the same time. We have a DEC permit for maintenance dredging. Um, but we're waiting for the Army Corps, which is a big drag. So right. well, I don't have a problem with it. So, That's you know, it. I mean, you got to make it stretch. There's no way around. There's no way around. It's been dredged before. Yeah. So, well, it's not new dredging. No. You know, it's it's they, they, can't, they can't dredge it very deep anyway because there's not much water in Penniman Creek, period. So, it's dredging the minus two. It, it has to happen. So. All right. You want, go my, ahead. you want my other ones while I'm here? Or not? Um, yeah, you might as well while you're here. So, we'll, we'll advance, that, advance that. All right. We don't need engineered plans for no, maintenance. Not right? for dredging, no. You do not now. Do you know 56 full spring? Yes. Yeah, this this guy, we, we got a permit, we got a renewal. He didn't do his bulkhead replacement. I said, listen, we're not going to work for you anymore if you don't do the job. Assured me that this time through he'll do the job. We have engineer plans already submitted, so he's going to replace his bulkhead. This is Trader Skip, Walter, Walter Kutner. Um, owns it with. Susan Pignatero. You, you have what you uh, permitted last. And he's going to redo the, um, the float dock and all that. Yeah, uh, same stuff that was on the old permit. Right. This time he's going to do the work though, and I told him not Can to. Do you have an overhead shot of this? I told him not to ask for permits and not do the work. So it's the vacant lot. Vacant lot, yeah. It's, it's weird because it shows up. The stuff on it is like a walking path. Right? Yeah, it's a walking path. Oh. I went down through the neighbors. I'm fine with it. Oh, as Scott said, I, I don't have a problem with it. No problem. No, we went through no this issues. Uh, we went through this already. You got no issues. It's already been approved once. Well, this time it'll get built. Okay. It's not. It's going to be double. I have one more. That's Henry Hildreth, 50 Little Neck Road. You guys have engineered plans, and all's, all's we need is to get it advanced. It's at, at the that, end. That's oh, at a different yeah. part of the meeting, though. Yeah. Yeah. So that's. So yeah. You submitted the engineered plans. Yeah, we'll yeah. get to that later. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. We worked on it last week's work session. We just needed engineers' plans because we were going to approve. We, right. We said it was okay to go. We just and you got it. That's after we go through. Yep. Plans. Right. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Thank all right. you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. And thank you for all your work on Fresh Pond. Well, yes. Almost done. I know. We're getting there. Glacier. Next you got uh, <coughs> Sandra <coughs> Palm. I have Sandra Palm, 92 Cold Spring. Um, we got a letter from Regina to to hold it over. Okay. Only thing I ask um, for the consultants for next time, if they did not get the information in time for Wednesday, to let us know because um, I could have put another permit in its slot. So it okay. hold someone else up. Hold. Trustee Warner. All right, we have uh, Donald Sutton, 30 Oak Lane, Hampton Bays, and consultants. 34 Oak Lane. 34 Oak Lane. The board had given him a permit to put batten piles in between uh, the uh, tongue and groove a few years ago uh, to stop the fill from washing in the bay. Um, this is a property on uh, Smith's Creek. It faces uh, towards the southwest. It's an, it's an old uh, harbor. It's an old harbor, yep. Um, basically asking, uh, I'll read the whole thing, remove and replacing in place approximately 204 feet of linear existing timber bulkhead with vinyl bulkhead, backfill with approximately 50 cubic yards of sandy fill to be trucked in from an approved upland source, Thank remove you. an existing 10 by 28 wood deck and construct an 8 by 10 wood deck attached to the landward side of the bulkhead, Install a three and a half by eight foot removable aluminum stair 
in place of the previously existing wood steps and establish a 10 foot wide gravel buffer land where the bulkhead as depicted on plans prepared by the uh, and consultants dated March 24th, 2023. I think your partner was handling this. Hmm? I think your partner was handling this. Hmm. It's all you? This is me. Um, so. This is the uh, pictures here. And I think you, you and I may have even spoken about this one um, prior to our application. It, it's pretty straightforward, it's bulkhead replacement. The only catch was there was this sort of larger deck, like a grade level deck that was attached to the uh, bulkhead that was put in, and from what I could tell from aerial photos a long time ago. Um, and of course they would love, I mean ideally to, you know, keep the entire thing, but we had talked about the fact that, you know, relative to maintaining a, a buffer behind the bulkhead that they would, there should be a much smaller deck there, um, basically just for access, you know, temporary storage of things going in and out of the water and the stairs. So we propose to show that entire deck to be removed and replaced with a much smaller eight by 10 deck just behind where that uh, new uh, stairway would go. And that's basically now would be one of these removable stairs that they can, you know, attack, put in in the spring and take out sure. in the fall. There was uh, previously, as we, I think I noted on there, is it in the note? Wooden stairs. Yeah, there had been some stairs there. They show on the survey. There's, you can see them in some Google aerials, but they were lost, uh, you know, during a storm, so they don't want to go through that again. Uh, and are proposing a removable stair. Um, as I said, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. They would maintain a 10-foot non-turf buffer. They wanted to do a gravel buffer behind it. And the only thing we didn't give you was um, the engineer stamp plans, because I'm just sort of on all of these. I'm just holding off on doing that until we, we get through the Ponera review. That's fine. Um, why won't, is there any chance of putting any uh, like grass behind the... Native in, vegetation. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a perfect area with overwash, and that grass would thrive pretty much there. And it re we reduce the, you know, absorb some of the runoff that comes from the property. It's a pretty large piece of property, and it's pretty level. And you know, I, I think it would it would really make a, a, a good project, a great project, yeah. putting a, a at least on like the sand and beach grass. Yeah, something. You know, I, I think it would look really yeah, nice, and I think it would be functional. Yeah. Also, he seems to want to have a gravel area. Um, I guess partially That's in lieu of thing. having okay. a deck. Could we do it like sort of a, a some combination of the two? Is there one side that you were more concerned the, about? The southerly side I would recommend where it, it faces more to, towards the southwest and you get the overwash there. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if I can talk to him about it, maybe I could just bring back a revised plan that would show, I mean, if the board would be amenable to that, maybe maintain some sort of gravel area in, in lieu of a deck and then do the rest of it as like sand and Cape American beach grass. That's cool. Minimal. Like that. Gravel area. Okay. <laughs> well, um, only because it's 200 linear feet of bulkhead, <coughs> yeah. so it's a substantial um, bulkheading project. So anything that can be done to to benefit the environment in terms of you know just yeah. absorption is beneficial. And not raising the bulkhead and knowing the uh, height of it right now, the overwash would be there. So the gravel, you'd probably have to push it back. Every time you right. do a storm, okay. But I think that it would be a much a really good project, a better project with some grass there. Sure. Okay. okay. Hey, so it's glowing by your right thumb. Glowing. Oh, in the picture. picture, in my picture. That's the neighbor's property. Okay. I, I don't. I. It was a small UFO that hit. <laughs> Okay. That, that's it's radioactive. That is not this project. <laughs> it's a radioactive. looking for a port of oh, no. <laughs> It's ra radioactive overwash. Let me see the picture, Ed. I'm just trying to remember. And, and the fence. Is it a kayak? Can I, uh, who, who owns the fences there? Because they have to be peeled back to like five feet for we can get public pass. I'm glad you asked that because I spent a lot of time asking him about it. You know what this actually is, Bill? It's wood, which for some reason, it's, it's it like, looks a, like trees. It's like an un, it's almost like a, I think it was almost like an untreated cap, like but like not a typical like marine like a piece construction of pine or something. Cap. Yeah. yeah, like something that. Oh, it, so it's not, it's not like, treated. Well. It looks like a, a piece of pine or something. Yeah, like it's got some knots and stuff in it like that. Yeah. I don't, I don't it's remember small. it being. It's just probably treated. the way it's. Well, on, you know, it's a neighbor's. Wet, regardless, yeah. but. Well, if it's his, if it's Mr. Sutton's fist, it has to be pulled back. 
to five feet. So the yeah. fence is not theirs. How about um, the other one over here? Ne on the other neither side? is. Neither so that's one is. That I, I specifically asked him about it um, okay. because I it, because I wasn't sure if they had it, like for dogs or something. So uh, they said they would mention to the neighbors. I mean, to to whatever extent they have to move any of that to work down there, yeah. then it would not be put back within ten feet unless the neighbor wanted to come in and make some sort of petition to you. Yeah, not well, that it I, would be a successful you know, one, but that's yeah. not really the applicant's well, being problem. Being that I, I know this, it's my area, I'll pay him a visit when they're doing the project, so All right. to, rem to remind him. Yeah. It's his. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that, that is why I asked. I said, you know the board has a policy about defending, yep. and then so he yeah. checked with... Yep. Apparently, right. neither is theirs. Okay. While you sit in here, what else do you have? Uh, just hopefully like a 30 second one, Strong's which was Marine. just Strong's. We needed to submit to you engineer stamp plans, yep. which we did. And you asked us to get the two neighbors consent yep. letters notarized. We got them both notarized. We submitted the original of the Southerly neighbor on Friday and then emailed to James. Uh, see how quick on the draw he is. Um, the northerly neighbors and the original is due by FedEx at our office before noon. So as soon as we get the original, we'll okay. submit it. But we did submit to James the. Um, yeah, that's that. Those should be the. Now those are the older plans. So basically, we're going to have all the stuff that we asked for at the last work session. You, you do have it all. Them, yes. Yeah, the just, only thing you don't them. have is the original version of the notarized letter, but we can drop it off this okay. morning, probably. It, they, so, we, so that it could be ready to advance, it, it subject is, to. It, it, it is. It should, I'm praying yeah. you're going to say, yeah, advance it. Yeah, Cause just as long it. as we get that, you, you know. Yep. Yeah, we, we, we'll get it. We have all of it. So advance it. And James is on top of it. So was that thirty seconds? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now I just wanted to make it clear that the northern neighbor had emailed it to us with the notary, and we forwarded that to James. We just also assumed that your attorney would want to have the original wet signature copy. It's nice so to have it in, in the package and everything. Yep. So we'll have that this morning, and these are the uh, oh, those are the other ones. So we have the we did receive the other ones. They're okay. just not uploaded. Thanks, okay. James. Yep. Very yeah, good. We sent that stuff to you Friday. Yep. Great. So we will. Nick's not here. Mm -hmm. So we're good to move ahead. So yep. that would be on for approval in two weeks? Or yes. Is that May 1st. May 1st. May 1st. Awesome. Thanks, Lisa. You're okay. okay. Thank, Thank you all. You're good. Thanks, Thanks for coming. coming. Thank you. All right. Next. Jonathan Tabone, 80 Harbor Drive in Noyak. And Mr. Tabone, how are you? Good morning. If you wouldn't mind you? signing in, that would be great. Sure. The, um, the board will remember that Mr. Tabone has been with uh, before us a couple times. Yes. Um, he has submitted um, revised plans. Um, do you want to describe the revisions you've made, Mr. Tabone? Sure. So uh, last time, uh, Trustee Welker and the board had, had, uh, had said that the dock needs to be adjusted to go over the, do you need copies? Of these? No, I have copies. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to, so the dock would, the fixed dock would need to go over the existing pathway, and have an L shape, to comply with the pier line. Yeah, if you want, can you just? I mean, you got a whole sure. bunch of them there. Yeah, so yeah. You stamp them in. Absolutely. You, you have. Do you need the cover sheet. Oh, you got them already. They got yeah. them stamped and everything. Okay. Yeah, yeah. stamped. I was just about oh. to pass them out, but. I'm oh, you got them. Awesome. All right. Oh. Yeah. And then here's another one too. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, sure. this is what we'd asked for. Yes. So, um, if you'll thing. recall, um, the original um, dock was proposed um, to the west and the south of um, the current uh, siting. Uh, it was close to the property line, um, and there were concerns because. Um, the advisory letter from the conservation board had um, suggested that we use previously disturbed area. The dock is now sited on the previously disturbed area. It is within the pier line. Um, it, 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 hit, it is um, perpendicular to the dock itself, as was requested, and it is at two and a half feet of water at the inside edge. 
So I believe that was everything that we had requested. And the plans are stamped. And the plans are stamped. Right. Um, James, was there anything that I'm missing here? No. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? No, I mean, I think we've covered everything that was uh, asked for. And uh, looks like it should, I think it should move forward. Each, each blue book now. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Got a okay. um, is it okay to um, then submit these revised to DEC Army Corps at this point? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. So I'd like to request that this advance yeah. since mm -hmm. everybody's yep. okay with it. Yep. Thank you. You got an A today. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you so much, much for advancing. Appreciate that. <laughs> nice job. Thank you. Okay. Have a good day. Thank you. You as well. Next. Okay, next is Morning. She knows Galapina she's next. 33 LLC, 33 Bluff Point Road in Sag Harbor. Morning. 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 Dana from Beeline Associates. Hey, Dana, how are you? Danny, you want to describe your project? Sure. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so proposed fixed stock at 33 Bluff Point Road. I believe there was a structure there a long time ago. I've seen some remnants on site and also on some aerials. Um, there's a new owner on the property and he would like to construct a fixed pier ramp and float. So pretty simple standard minimum requirements. I think we've met everything. We do have permits from DEC, Army Corps, Department of State. Um, and after this board, we'll head over to um, Harbor Committee. Um, to get their approval as well, and also some upland improvements um, will be included in that application outside of your J. Right, that's that's good. Thanks. Okay, yeah. the um, length of this dock is 90 feet from mean high water. Correct. Yes, and Where and the overall the is 107 pier line in this section of Sag Harbor Cove. 64. Yep. Is 60. 60. 65. 65. 65. 65. I think it's 65. So, so that's a problem. Right. Yeah. So that is one thing that, um, <sighs> James, do you want to pull up yeah. the aerial? The length and of the dock is to get to that depth that is necessary to meet some other requirements, agency requirements. So the, t the terminus of that float is at two and a half feet, which is, um, Minimum, obviously, for DC. Right. But that's that's a problem with our pier line. Okay. So, so if you if you look, Donna, at the docks that are just to the west, there right. you, you'll see they're significantly shorter to meet our pier line because we have a ruling that if you don't meet water at an appreciable depth, you have to draw the whole structure back. So th this is a ongoing concern within Sag Harbor Cove and multiple other. Okay water bodies within the town, but we do have an existing pier line, and this project, as proposed, um, greatly exceeds it. Right. You have a hydro map Bathymetry? Here. Yeah, it's on um, it 60 feet. our sheet, right. two of three. I think it's 60 feet, it's 60 right? What, feet? The pier line is 60 feet. Right. Yeah, that's what I thought. So what's the, where's okay. the contour So lines? your pier line is 60 feet from mean high water? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Do you have bathymetry? For this it's on sheet um, right two of three. Can you zoom so we can, I can't. Uh, two, three. Oh, this so one here. Oh, sorry. It's on the top portion there, so yes. there's the two and a half feet. So where does 60, 60 come in? And what, what do you got at 60? Probably a foot and a half. So. Right? I mean, James, I'm just guessing. Uh, from it would be a third of the Oh, I have a scale. Right. A third of okay. the line, so I'd say probably a garner around here. Yeah. So you, they might be able to do a drop down platform in the morning. Yep. And a kayak rack. But, um. All right, so 60 feet from mean high water. Right would be slightly C would have that um, 1.2 depth measurement. Right. Exactly. So you end up a foot and a half of water approximately. Right. So 
no floating dock, just a ladder and a uh, kayak rack, if you'd like that, or a, a paddleboard rack. Okay, so that's something I can go back and ask. You can also put a drop-down platform, too. Oh, right. Like, like, okay, so drop-down platform. Then they can put them on out in the deeper water for the boat. Um, okay, I'm just, so to be able to move this forward, I really have very limited options. You have to go yeah. back. We have to yeah. go back. There's no, get no. Okay. There's yeah, no. We can't violate that no pier forward. line without, you know, changing yeah. all our regulations. To, to go right. forward. Yeah. I'm not sure if there was some sort of like variance maybe that he no. could get. We don't have that. We, we would don't. have to change the entire regulation. Okay. No. Public hearing. The public hearing to see if it's worthy of moving the pier line out further and extensively you know, long yeah. process yeah. in right. order to to uh, to be perhaps able. right. Okay, I mean, so it, you're you're. It's just because I'm sure you see mean mean low water is so far seaward. Yeah. Of I mean, they could a lot of people. yeah. Right. You could do this, and if at some point in time in the future it changed, you could apply for modification and right make your way. Further seaward, you know. Okay. But for now, if you want to get things going, mm -hmm. we got to comply with the blue book regulations. Mm -hmm. he, okay. He yeah. has a boat now. I'm, I'm not sure if he has a boat right now because there's right. actually no structure there right now. Right. Um, and like I said, he just bought the property not too too long ago. Right. Um, and this is just, um, you know, he there was a structure there before. I can and you can right. see the remnants of it. I mean. Right, buy, I got buy waterfront property. I, I, I would, yeah. you know, talk to him and then reapply yeah. what fits into the pier line and the blue book regulations, and that's really the best you could do for your client at this point in time. Okay. So, and the the advice to do a drop down platform with uh, a small boat that you could gain access to a mooring um, that you put your larger boat out on. Okay. Would be. Or, or maybe they just want kayaks or something. Right. You know? yeah. Right. You put the boat in a marina. Um. So There's I don't no know if you guys have come across this before, but the Department of State does not like kayak racks. Um, they don't call them water dependent, which is so strange. We've had a several water, water dependent. Yeah, what? because they figure you could take it right. Take so it back we've and had forth. pushback from that agency in regards right. to right. That. Everybody so has their thing. <laughs> Everybody's so got their thing. It, we the formula to failure is try and please everybody. We had worked yeah. on. Uh, with, um, two little stainless brackets for a kayak rack, putting them on the side. I mean, it's yeah. it's so it's so simple. Remember what you last consultant yeah. there? We've done it a couple different ways. Sometimes it's a platform that's ad adjacent to right. the catwalk. Sometimes it's a bit like. But you don't even know if they want that. You're right. looking to get yeah. out on the water. You, you, yeah, I have to touch base you, back you with them to and see client. what their intentions are. Right. Um, this, you know, we've come so far with the other agencies. It's. Have to see what you know what it is? We're the landowners. Right, of course. Yes. So, yeah. you Come know, to us we're following the regulations. Yeah, that makes that sense. Yeah. Um, every, everybody's applying their thing, so talk to your client. Yes. Yeah. And then... Yeah. Make some adjustments. Yeah, and then maybe give James a call and we get back on the agenda. Okay. Um, what do you think the time frame is? A month? A couple weeks? Oh, I would say a couple weeks. A couple weeks? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, we'll push this through just so, you know... You know, keep, he keep wants, it moving, keep it right, on the agenda. Exactly, yeah. yeah. He wants a waterfront structure, so right. I'm sure he'll. Right, we, and we'll work with you. It's just got to comply to the blue book. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, understood. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Have a great one. Very much. We'll be in touch. Next one's Hidden Cove Marina, 51 Pine Neck Avenue, Noyak. Except for Manny, are you here? <coughs> okay. okay. Um, 51 Pine Neck Avenue in Noyak. This is Hidden Cove Marina, and the owner is representing, or one of the owners is representing. Um, this was a substantial um, reconstruction project of multiple docks, bulkheads, ramps, uh, floating docks at this marina. Um, when um, our dock inspector went to the property. Um, there were some dis discrepancies that were noted between the original request and what was actually built. So we requested that um, the applicant come uh, submit a modification so that the 
uh, language in the permit matches up with what was actually built on site. And many, if you'd like to uh, expand upon that at all. Sure. Um, I, I don't want to pass blame, so I, I guess I'll take the blame for whatever mistakes are here as far as between the uh, expediter and the uh, installer. Um, the at the time, there's a, four violations, and um, the the two that are the minor ones, I would say, out of all four of them, would be the uh, aluminum dock ramps that go from the um, bulkhead to the dock. At the time of uh, installation, when he was ordering them, he said, "Well, why do we have down twenty foot ramps?" I said, "You know, the expediter had them down, and that's what we applied for." He says, "You don't need them." So the ramps became shorter. Of course, they were le less expensive to buy, so it was like an easy sell. Like, okay, we'll go with the short ramp. So instead of being 20 feet long, there are uh, 12, and uh, there's three of them. Two out of three are, are shorter than what they're supposed to be. The bad thing about it is that the docks were not as far out as they should have been. Good, let's say, for the 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 bay, because now we're not sticking out as far, but bad for us, because if we had known this, if I had thought ahead, well, we could have had two more slips or had room for more boats, but I wasn't thinking at that point as far as like squeezing in more boats and stuff like that. So, okay, whatever, and he convinced me and that was it. So that was one violation where the ramps are not as long as they should be. They're functional. They've been working that way for two years. How much shorter are they? Um, so, so six foot difference, how does that equate to two more boat slips? I well, it, I think you said 12. The, the 12. 12 versus a 20, so it's eight, eight foot. foot. And then you want on each side, you know, because you have. Okay, eight yeah, foot. And yeah. you have a boat on each side. Regardless, so I'm just saying, it's not like, oh, yeah, we'll go for the 20s, we'll squeeze in more boats. It wasn't like that. six I, foot is narrow, right? Yes. So I, I, that was a mistake, I guess, on my part. I should have just said, no, stick with the plans now, but that's what happened. So that's that's why why that particular. So you de happened. you decrease the footprint of your docks. <laughs> um, the docks stay the same size. The footprint yeah. change, correct? Yeah, yes. So it's less now. Yep. I have to look. Go back. back. There are basically three items, right, James? Yeah, I have the uh, Four. modification so, request yeah. up on the screen. There. So this the this is the request. So. The existing return um, the was, return, Right, ahead. the return ahead, is Manny. three feet, if I'm correct, too long, and it's a return that comes up by the ramp. Mm -hmm. And when I met him out there, when he was laying it out, the same thing came up. Like, Why is this going up so far? It's going to cut off your entrance. Mm -hmm. It's going to be sticking out of the ground further because the, um, the elevation's where it was. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I guess short is better. And, and, you know, and honestly, I don't think he took anything off the price. Not like I saved like $3,000 or something, but he just, we made it shorter. To aesthetically, it would look better. This so. says that it's lengthening the return. Replace and extend the existing 30-foot return with a 57 return. Was it, was it approved for something? It was approved, approved for 60. We had oh, 60, okay. And he didn't go quite as far, the three feet less. So you're looking gotcha. to amend it three feet less? Yes. Exactly. I don't want to add the three feet. I mean, no, no, no. no. You're paying for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then um, the, the um, A dock, the three by 16 ramp was replaced with a two six by 16 foot ramp. So just a, a minor. Um, B dock, um, six two by nineteen catwalks, and um, C dock, uh, three by twelve ramp replaced the two and a half, or, or is replaced by a two and a half by twelve foot. Yeah. So that that's um. So the original approval on the return was for 60, but what was actually installed 57. was 57. Well, Do you want to see? It says replace and it, extend the existing so, 30. So he had a 30-foot return. For the original permit date, you guys issued a 60-foot return to extend the 30-foot to 60. 
he built 57 instead of 60. Okay, so you, you talk, okay, because that's not where I was confused. Though. Yeah, because James, when you read that. James, bring up the um, original permit wording but there. You see what I'm saying? When you read that, what that is, it looks like it's way off. Yep. So, so, so it's 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 look, at, look, at the the third, <laughs> look at the third paragraph or third sentence yeah, but when there. You, wait, replace and extend. Right, existing that, that doesn't sound right there but it's supposed to be 57 we had originally a 30 and we have and we had the permission to put six right but you we went, 50, stalled, so. it went right. 57 right but yeah so yeah so you you want to legalize it you want to just cut back yes yes, yes. right, right. Yes. It's easy. so this is what he's proposing now is replace and extend the 30 so, so is all that he's proposing compliant with blue book it, it appears so. It appears that everything's less than anyway. less than so, we so approved. Why good. would we not? Yeah, well, we're good. I just want to, you know, it, it's been a little bit of a modify process, it. and then he's good. Yes, right. There's no other violations, no other issues, no, no we, other. I don't think we heard any complaints from the boys in the boat ramp either. No, it's it's been quiet down there. All right. So you want to advance modification? Yes, please. I would think that that would be the appropriate thing to do. Okay. Yep. Thank Great. You. Manny, thank you very much yeah, for coming you. today for coming. and yep. for well, working, what do I do next? working with us on this. James, Manny will now, do you have stamped, do you have stamped plans with this? Uh, maybe if you just no. follow up so with you James, need James tomorrow. James yeah. Yeah. yeah, engineered um, stamp plans for what you're requesting to be modified, submitted to the office. Okay. You're making sure the request for modification matches the plans. If, if you just call us tomorrow, we can oh, work you. Okay, yeah, very good. that's fine. Yep. Yeah, thank you very much. Right. Of okay. course. Coming in. Yep. Yeah, we can work you through that. Thank okay. you. Have a great one. Trustee Parrish. Uh, first is Envision LLC, 7 Tanners Neck Lane, West Hampton, First Coastal. Good morning, Aram. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Aram. Hello again. Hello. This was on once before, and it was a, a letter was sent for an advisory with the. Uh, Remind me of the request. Board. <coughs> Remind me of the request. What what is this application? What is this is an application for a doc. Yeah. And. Uh, <coughs> Three hundred and twenty oh, by four foot catwalk with the two two eight inch diameter floating support piles, untreated wood only catwalk to be open grade decking. How are we looking? Conservation board uh, said that they want for a light penetrable deck needs to be at least four feet above the existing grade. I think you have them at two and a half feet. Yes. That was the only uh, only thing they had. So um, I, I uh, read that letter this morning, and um, I certainly will bring this back to my client, but it struck me that the, the rationale for raising it to four feet was to um, allow wildlife to pass and for the grass to be uninterrupted. Um, the uh, raising it to four feet triggers New York State Building Code and requirement for handrails. And sure. Yes, anything above 30 yeah. inches. What do your other uh, regulatory authorities have on this for the uh, height? Uh, nobody else has asked about it. Now, and I would say that two and a half feet is certainly enough for the grasses. The grasses themselves are 18 inches. And, you know, the only wildlife down there are either deer, which can jump a six-foot fence, uh, waterfowl, which can fly over or walk under, and I see that. small creatures less than four feet high. Thank you. I know that the trustees have, have in the past allowed the two and a half feet over the wetland vegetation with uh, open grate decking. Uh, the, the trustees actually had regulation that said that 
and we, actually, we petitioned with the, the Army Corps always um, having them raised to four feet, you guys changed it to allow potentially to four feet. Right. That's um, why I asked the question because we were getting yeah, so. problems of people coming yeah. back because, you know, they, they wanted higher and we were lower. We were mm -hmm. trying to like get the projects to work. We petitioned right. the Army Corps. Right. Right. But That's now right. you're saying they're not saying anything? Yeah. Uh, Do you the, have uh, approved permits from them? Uh, we got a letter from the DEC. They wanted some minor changes. We incorporated them. I can't remember precisely what they are, but they didn't relate to the height. And then. It's um, amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. I think because well, I, I think it was Army Corps that was the bigger push. It, yes. And so. Army Corps was getting it from their internal uh, interagency review. Right. Um, but I think this is a, being done as a letter of permission because it meets all those criteria. The Army Corps' review over the height of the docks were ne was never reviewed on Long Island. It was reviewed in Puerto Rico, in Florida, and uh, someplace up in Cape Cod. They never actually did a review of these uh, right. heights because there's a 70 or 70 plus page paper that uh, InterScience furnished our board with, which I actually read through and. Uh, and it was more uh, looking at under, you know, uh, submerged aquatic vegetation yes. than these uh, tidal Vegeta wetlands. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I, what is the, th I have to ask, what is the threshold height where handrails need to be applied on these docks and not applied? What, what 30, is 30, 30 inches? 30 inches. 30 inches from grade. So that's why we were always going with two and a half feet. Yeah. And that's why we promoted, uh, you know, the the light penetrating decking and most minimal most handrails. Yeah, you know, minimal handrails. And most of the projects that we have approved in the time that I was on the board, I can actually say that it's been uh, the light penetrating decking has worked very well in preserving and promoting the environment. So. The, the only other thing is, is we require 60% and it specifies 50% on here, so. 60% light penetrator. What, what does yeah. the product actually uh, in, uh, represent? Roof and flow? I, and, yeah. and I do know uh, there was a paper that was generated by the uh, it's 50. New York State DEC, and I'd be specifically Chuck Hamilton, that was, uh, you know, uh, opposing these higher docks with handrails because birds of prey could actually... Uh, Get on them and uh, you know predate uh, the the yeah, they provide and, purchase. Yes. Yeah. So I remember that whole. Everybody's issue. got there. We were having this conversation <laughs> with a, with another uh, applicant's agent relative to every regulatory authority having their uh, their issue. But but the truth is, I did read the report as well, and it, it wasn't germane to our area right. at all. And we did pr we did push back. Uh, you know, we provided our own documentation. We did. Together. We put yeah. together a we put together a a study of, of of our local findings relative to how well vegetation did underneath the light penetrative decking uh, in our area uh, yeah, with our current regulations, and it and it fared very well. Yeah, um, I don't have any issues with that. Um, I just put just, a, you know, want to make it aware that the Army Corps is the one that may have pushback. So if you're if you're good with that, Aaron, then I, I don't have any we, we, you know, based on our local knowledge, our local, uh, you know, study of this, uh, you know, it, it should be fine the way it is. And I, if you do have pushback from a, another regulatory authority, you may be in here for modification, right? But you're not seeing that right now. Right now we're not seeing that. And, and minimizing your handrails. And, yeah, and I think that's in everybody's interest. Creatures yeah. and people alike. Yeah, exactly. You don't want the, the view shed of yeah. these. Uh, well, there was an incident in uh, the village of Quag where they, we, we were going against these handrails, and all of a sudden they came out with these stainless steel, you know, guide wire, and then putting them down on the beach became problematic. These birds were flying into them and killing themselves. So, you know, this, this, there's always there's always something. You know, it's never going to be. Uh, you know, we try. We do. Um, so I will uh, amend the plans to show the 60% light penetrating and have them stamped for board's approval. At the two and a half foot height. Yeah, which which can kind of coincides with our our findings of the success rate of the vegetation below it with the 60%. Well, it looks like that. this is another project that we could document how well this uh, 
you know, stuff that we there's, are using there's now, many, currently right? using, uh, works. J James had a ton of them when we, when we provided remember the that. information. Yeah. 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 So going forward, not with your project, but with others, do we have to get some, because what does our language read in the blue book? Does it read two and a half or does it read no, four? No, it, it, it's up to, up to four feet. Right, we have the discretion of the board. Do allow case up. by case basis to right. four feet. So we, okay. we, we could. So we are fine, we're but fine. do we need something from Army Corps and DEC stating? I don't think we need anything. I think we're good. That, I, well, I, I think they need to do their thing and we do our thing and as we're doing right now. I mean, at this point, if Aram's okay with it, then right. if they come back and don't give him a we, permit for it, then you have to modify it. Right. Right. Yeah. We, we yeah. did take into consideration uh, the con board's issues as well, which yep. is good, but no, we can't. I, yeah. I'm not referring to this project. I, I agree that we're on the same page with this project. What I'm doing, what I'm trying to do is look forward and see going forward, uh, will we be able to encourage other applicants to apply for two and a, two and a half feet I, I, catwalks, or do we need some two and a half feet I, in height, or do we need to have some sort of conversation I, I with we should, these other regulatory right agencies? Right now, I think we should just leave it, leave it alone right now, and let's just, let's just go through our normal process okay. here. I think we should just leave it well alone yeah. right now. Yeah. Okay. We got enough on our plate right now. Yes. Let's leave that alone. This is good. Uh, collaboration here. Thanks very much. Okay. okay. Thank Thanks, Aram. Have Thank a good day. Okay, you have another oh, one, yeah. Mr. Sorry, uh, plans. Just need the plans yeah, updated yeah. for the 60% and stamped. I have stamped. another one? And stamped. No, no Justin that Parrish that does. Oh. <laughs> uh, we have Stephen Haywin, Seven Meadows, Seven Bay Meadow Lane, West Hamden, LI Permits. No one's here. This is a maintenance dredging of Sandpiper Canal. I think we I think, Yeah, we're good with this. I think we should just make sure that um, they do send us a notice of commencement so we can put some eyes on it because they're going to move it to man. Tanner's Neck and then they're going to truck it to uh, an upland approved site by the DEC in Brookhaven, which yep. is fine. I just think that they it has to be perhaps a special condition to make sure that not it's not washing overboard into no, the bay that it has to be okay. contained on the barge and, and cannot be there cannot be the spillage of any spoils on the bay bottom uh, in between points A and points B where the project is occurring and where it's being transported they have to make sure that all spoils are contained appropriately so right. that's the only special condition I think we should add and, and I would just drive home the fact that they need to Make sure they send us a commencement so that somebody could, you know, kind of take Over, a look. Oversight. Yeah, take a look at it. We sent George to take a look at it. Constables, one of the trustees, somebody's got to just take a look at it. Other than that, it should happen. So they'll remove the material, um, put it on the barge, and then offload it where? Tanner's, Tanner's Neck and then truck it to Brookhaven, Brookhaven. site. I got the Brookhaven. DEC. I missed the Tanner's Neck. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. So... But those conditions, I'd say it advances. Okay, uh, Mark, can you write those conditions into the resolution, or? Sure. Yeah, because we don't we don't want to have the dredge spoil spilling off the barge in random places throughout the back, as we had that happen to us. Yes. In the past, yes. so we don't we don't we want to avoid that. Not acceptable. Okay. If you want to write the language and send it, and then I'll just have Nick put it into the resolution, and then. Yeah. I'll right. get a little more background for you, but that's fine. Perfect. Trustee Parrish. Okay, next is Stephen Probst, 187 Evergreen Road, Flanders, Jeffrey Pantanjo. Not here. He's never here. This, is, uh, this was on for the last work session, and he wasn't here, so I don't know. I, well, there's still the same issue. Did you make contact? There's no water there. There's not enough water there to accommodate, I don't think, what he's looking to do. So I, he's got to respond so that we yeah, can. Right, I, I think that he didn't it respond. Just be held until he it, it has to be held. There's no change from last meeting. So, but this is preventing, to your point, uh, Trustee Pell. This is preventing right. Trustee Parrish from putting on another application in this spot. Yes. So I wouldn't put him back on. No. Don't put it just. The same thing with me. Just don't put him back on until he hears from him. Okay. Yeah. That's I, all. I could have done another one. 
I mean, if the applicant is in that much of a rush to get this to go through, he would be here representing. Well, or respond to reach. Right. You know, we reached out, he should reach back. So I would say if he doesn't reach back, don't put him on for the next session. Okay. That's all. We can take care of that in house. Well, that. that concludes that portion of it. We can write on time. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now we just have general permit applications for determination. Final stamped plan review. Trustee Warner, you have two on. 50 Little Neck Road, uh, LLC. Uh, James, do we have all the uh, material that we need? I believe so. And we're looking for stamp plans to finalize the uh, list, right? Yes. So we're good then? Yes, they're on the board now. Okay, so we can move that ahead? Yep. And then uh, 86 Forster Avenue, 80 LLC, 86 Forster Avenue, Hampton Bays. Um, we received everything needed on this one too, James? I believe so. I'm going to pull it up just so you guys can quickly glance at it. Stamp plans. Yep. Everything we discussed is on there. Yep. All right, so then we can move that ahead. Yep. Okay. Two for two. Thank you. Trustee Pell. I have 289 Noyak LLC. Yes. 289 Noyak Road. We got this. James says we got the same plan for that, and he's fine. We're fine with it. Yes, sir. Uh, let me just pull them up so you guys can quickly look. Thanks, Brant. Great. Good. Thank you. And then Robert J. McHugh, 59 Cliff Drive in um, Noyak, DKR Shores. <coughs> um, we also have stamped plans for this project. Yes. So I'd like to request it uh, advancing. Okay. Good. All right, so that concludes. We do have an exec session for the purposes of discussing litigation. And um, at this point in time, I think it's appropriate to make a motion to adjourn and go into executive session. Motion. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, have a great day. We'll see you at the general session. Scott, can you send Charles?